Hi there, welcome back to my channel. This is a video all about beam stresses. And we know that a beam is a member that is subjected to bending. And we know that beams typically have two types of stress. So we have normal stress sigma, and we have a shearing stress tau. Now in this problem, we're given a beam that is in equilibrium. So the top picture here, we've got a beam that is in static equilibrium. And what we would like to do is figure out what is happening at these four points. So we've got point A up here, point B, point C, and point D. So if I wanted to put those in context up above, this is probably something I should change for the assignment. So A is living up there, B is right there, C is here, and D is right in the middle right there. All right, so let us figure out what's going on here. So we know this first free body is in equilibrium, and then I've taken more free bodies. So a lot of work has been done for you on this problem. So I cut through plane AA, and I put that in equilibrium as well. And usually we would see, um, you know, some of our typical symbols here, right? So this would be kind of like a reaction, reaction in the y direction. If we carry this x, y typical coordinate system into this problem, there is our shear force at plane A, A. Here is our bending moment at plane A, A. Now, both the shear force and the bending moment are drawn in the positive direction here, um, but that's actually the direction in which they act. How do I know that? Well, I could do my shear and moment diagrams. So we know that this is essentially a simply supported beam like this. Here is my shear diagram. Increase, decrease, back to zero. Here is my bending moment diagram. Increases linear to a peak moment there at mid-span. So at that first section, right, I've got an internal positive shear force, that type of um, tendency, that type of tendency to shear the planes, and I've got a positive bending moment, so th these type of arrows. Um, and as we go through the problem, see that's not um, always the case, but, you know, here we've got a positive bending moment there, and we have a positive shear force here, but a negative shear force there. That's consistent with our shear diagram right over here, right? So instead of being the up down, this is the positive convention. This one is a down up or a negative shear force. And then of course we have another negative shear force over there. All right, so lots of preliminaries here. Lots of work has been done for you. The free bodies are in equilibrium. I've labeled these points A, B, C, and D. And below the free bodies are four stress elements. And what we want to do is figure out for these four points, which of those points A, B, C, D does this state of stress correspond to? So we've got some sigmas in here like this, right? These are all taus right here. And um, actually, I'm noticing something that I think was just a typo. I don't think I made this intentionally wrong, but maybe I did. Um, in order for this to be in equilibrium, right, if those shear stresses point towards that corner, these two would need to point towards this corner. So this arrow is actually never, ever going to be the case. All right, now that I've got those in equilibrium, we've got our shear stresses and our uh, flexural stresses ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and add a layer here turn down the volume on the main layer. And let's zoom in. I'll show you how to do this problem. All right, let's start with point A. So what we want to do is draw a square that represents point A. Boop, 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 boop. There it is. Okay. Now, I think I might change a slightly finer pin there. All right, so there's a square, and that represents point A. And all I need to do is figure out the shear stress that is at that point due to this shear force, V. Is there a shear stress tau there? And the answer is, surprisingly, no. Tau is going to be equal to zero because A 
is what we call an extreme fiber, extreme fiber. So we know from that shear stress distribution that the extreme fibers top and bottom will not get any shear stress. So we know that one's gonna end up being zero. Um, but do we have a flexural stress? Well, to answer that question, we go to our bending moment. So there's our bending moment in plane A, A. And does that create compression above this line and tension below? Yeah, you bet it does. So this is our neutral axis or axis of bending here. I usually call this like N dot A for neutral axis. So we need some compression. In which direction does the compression go? Well, it's going to be with respect to the longitudinal axis. So the shortening that's happening at fiber A happens in the x direction. So let's add that in there. There are the stresses. All of this other stuff is not required to answer the question. And there is my point A. I'm going to grab this. You know what, maybe I'll leave it in place. I'll leave it in place for now and come back to it, okay? All right, there's A. Let's go to the next point, B. So B is neither at the bottom nor the top. And it's also not like right in the middle. So we would expect the axis of bending, the neutral axis, neutral surface to lie there. So let's draw a square to represent point B. Do I get a shear force? Yep. Um, what direction does it go? Well, it matches. Oh, I think I misspoke. Do I get a shear stress? Yes. Okay, um, I need to match the direction of my shear force. We know that shear forces happen in a plane and that a shear stress occurs at a point. So we got one shear stress there. And then after that, we just have to put it in static equilibrium. And so now we've got all four shear stresses. Whenever you have one, there's always three other hidden ones lurking around. How about uh, bending moments? So again, there's a positive bending moment. You should be able to see the compression on top and the tension on bottom. So we've got tension at B, and that tension is going to pull with respect to the longitudinal axis. All right, so we've got B done. Let's go on to C. All right, just like B, C is neither at the top fiber. That's where we get a zero shear stress. It's not at the bottom fiber. That's where we get a zero shear stress. It's not on the neutral axis. That's where we would get a zero flexural stress. Um, so we're going to get a little bit of both. So there is C. There is my shear stress. I'm matching up the direction of the shear force. Once I've got one, I've got three other ones. So there's a, my transverse shear stress is happening at point C. Now we go into the bending moment and turn that into a flexural stress. As mentioned before, this area is in compression. This area down there is in tension. That means point C is in compression. The compression is in the direction of the longitudinal axis. Um, that's the x-axis. Let's go to the last point, point D. Do our same little pattern. So there is my point. There is D. There is my cut. At the cut, I've got a shear force that's going down. So I need a shear stress that's going down. D is supposed to be right at mid-depth or right along the neutral surface or the neutral axis. In case the picture isn't clear, you should have been able to deduce that from process of elimination of the four matching choices provided. But just in case um, you didn't a pick up on that. That one is supposed to be kind of centered or at mid depth. So we're going to get our maximum worst case shear stresses. And are we going to get any bending moment? Well, we're not in the compressive area. We're not in the tensile area. We are right there at the neutral axis. So by definition, my flexural stresses are going to be zero at the neutral axis. All right. I think I am ready to match these up. So let's see how this works. Here is A. Okay, so that looks a lot like that. So we're just kind of blowing it up in scale. That one matches there. B. So I've got flexural and I've got shear stress and I've got tension. So B has to go right there. Okay. 
and see, I've got um, some shear stress. I've got some compressive flexural stress. So that one looks like it goes right there. And last would be D. D needs to go over. Let me clean this up a little bit. Okay, D is going to go right there. And then as mentioned, there is an error in my material that I will fix. The shear stress on the bottom definitely is going to point to the left and not to the right. How do I know that equilibrium of the stress element? That's it for this problem. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was helpful to you. This problem is all about beam stresses, flexural stress and transverse shear stress. Have a great day.